in having this intimate, lifelong association with the human body yes. and all of its forms and substance in, in your hands yeah. and in your mind, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you reflect on, on human consciousness. Uh, how, how do you think about that? The seat of consciousness is in the central nervous system. And uh, before a certain series of studies that were done in Chicago, consciousness was only really discussed seriously by metaphysicians and psychologists. But in 1948, a seminal paper published by Horace Magoon and uh, Giuseppe Maruzzi, who was visiting Northwestern at that time and worked with Dr. Magoon, recognized that in the core of the brain was a region called the reticular activating system. It was a, re a, a reticular region that they called the reticular activating system because it activated the cerebral cortex from a sleeping state to a wakefulness state. So what these two men recognized for the first time was the area in the core of the brainstem that was responsible for consciousness. In fact, lesions or injuries in this region of the brain result in coma. Mm. But no one really ever put together the mechanism by which a person was aroused from the sleeping state until these studies were uh, were uh, published by uh, Magoon and Maruzzi. It created a totally different concept of what the nervous system was all about because it put into play the idea that the thoughts that we've had and the uh, recognition of the more subtle functions of the human brain really had a place within the nervous system in certain specific regions of, of, of the nervous system. Other studies uh, uh, reflected on that and uh, uh, persons such as Wilder Penfield in Montreal uh, discovered the regions of the uh, of the brain, specific regions of the, of the brain that was responsible for movements of various uh, parts of the, uh, of the upper limb or the lower limb. So that period between 19, in my opinion, between 1945 and 1960 was one of the most dramatic uh, areas of brain research uh, contributions that have happened, I think, in centuries. That's what got me so excited at that time, yes. which is precisely the time that I decided to go into brain research and came to you. Well, that was uh, <laughs> uh, very fortunate on our part that you decided to come to UCLA. But I do remember, uh, Bob, when you did come here, and uh, uh, you did a terrific job uh, uh, during your graduate uh, program. Uh, here at UCLA. Well, thank you. It, uh, it's really had a very meaningful part of my, my entire life. I've done some other things, uh, but it has always remained the, the core of my way of thinking that uh, one learns when you apply the scientific method, yeah. and especially when we're dealing with the brain yeah. and all of its uh, m mysteries and, and, and marvels. Yeah, well, the brain is the organ of behavior. And uh, what it uh, entails is the I, would, I like to say the human aspects of, of our lives because uh, all of the more subtle functions, uh, the way in which we feel, the way in which we love, the, the uh, recognition of, uh, uh, of our uh, uh, fellow uh, people, uh, of our families, uh, all of these uh, uh, humanistic aspects of, uh, uh, of our lives really reside within the central nervous system of which the brain is the principal organ. When you look at the anatomy of the brain versus the anatomy of all other aspects, the thorax, uh, uh, all, all the different parts of the body, the output seems to, to uh, 
to a first approximation to be so different. Uh, yeah. uh, the gut, uh, food digestion, yeah, yeah, different. Yeah. But here now we have the organ of sensation, and I, I know that I'm in this room and I see a skeleton, yeah, yeah, and yeah, 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 we yeah. have this sense. They seem so radically different, but they're both founded. Well, they, yeah, but they're not really because <laughs> the brain is connected to the spinal cord, and the spinal cord has 31 pairs of of nerves and the brain itself has 12 pairs of nerves that go out to all parts of the body. And it's that manner or that uh, 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 complexity of, uh, of uh, peripheral nerves through which sensory input comes into the brain. The brain takes that information, analyzes it, and then uh, forms uh, a response and oftentimes uh, it's a, uh, a motor response, for example, uh, to move an arm or to move, move a limb. Sometimes the nervous system commands the body not to respond. And we have areas in the brain that inhibit behavior, mm -hmm. along with other areas that facilitate behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, to the advantage of the person, it is best uh, to uh, I inhibit uh, one's response. Sometimes it's best not to say something than <laughs> to say something. So, uh, More people should learn that lesson. <laughs> I think you're right. But in, anyway, uh, uh, you're right. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a magnificent uh, organ that controls every aspect of, uh, of uh, human behavior. Well, let's talk about the uh, the input to the brain, the peripheral nerves, yes. and then the cranial nerves. Really, is is gathering information from the entire body and, and sense organs, so that so that the, the the brain really needs to have the body to really be what we think of as a brain. That's right, exactly, and and we have uh, uh, a, a very complete set of peripheral nerves that bring that information into the uh, into the brain. Uh, 31 pairs brings it into the spinal cord. 12 pairs brings it directly into the brain. The manner in which we see, the manner in which we hear, all of our special senses in addition to those two. Also input from our, from our body. Uh, every aspect of the skin where we can feel someone touching us or or, uh, or uh, uh, input from our internal organs when we have a pain in our abdomen or a pain in the chest. This is all information that the brain takes and analyzes and must react to it. Uh, sometimes the reaction is not to do anything. Other times it is in fact to do uh, something specific. But the awareness of what we think of as the I or the internal person is made up, certainly to a large degree, of all this information coming from different parts of the uh, of, of the of the nerve inputs. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true, and and uh, it is what uh, allows us to learn. It's what allows us to uh, recognize. It's what allows us really to. Uh, carry on on a daily basis.